standard chronology in Malta puts its earliest inhabitants at 6000 BCE. Their pottery style is known as Ar Dalam and is named after the cave where some examples of it have been found. It is also the name of the earliest phase of prehistory on the islands. Since the pottery is similar to that of the Stentinello culture in Sicily and southeast Italy, it's thought these Neolithic farmers travelled to Malta across the sea from one of those places, most likely Sicily. The chronology of Maltese prehistory is based on radiocarbon dating and optically stimulated luminescence, with the most recent work having been published in 2020. Many sites have been explored, so it seems that Unlike Sicily and other parts of the Mediterranean, Malta was not inhabited earlier than the Neolithic. However, in spite of consistent scientific dating evidence over the years, some researchers have cast doubt on the Neolithic as the earliest period for human habitation on the islands. In fact, they think people travelled to the islands much, much earlier. There are many reasons for this, but in this video I'm talking about one reason in particular. And that is the story of the supposed Neanderthal teeth. It's a long and controversial story that's well documented in multiple sources. So I've linked these below if you want to read a little further into it. In 1917, the Ardalam cave was excavated and revealed fossilized animal remains going back more than 150,000 years. This cave was formed by the actions of a river flowing through the valley above it when Malta had a much wetter climate during the Pleistocene, the time when northern Europe was intermittently covered in ice sheets. Six strata dated to different time periods were revealed. These are relevant to the story, so let's start by summarizing them here. The bone-free clay layer is the earliest stratum and was formed before the ceiling collapsed that created the entrance to the cave. Therefore, it has no organic remains. Dating back to between 130,000 and 180,000 years, the hippopotamus layer sits above the clay stratum and is where the fossilized remains of hippopotami and elephants were found. The layer above this is known as the pebble layer and was found to be empty of animal remains, so it's likely Malta had little fauna at that time. Above this sits the deer layer, which dates back to between 10,000 and 18,000 years, and contain the bones of deer, wolves and bears upon excavation. The calcareous sheet is a 6 centimeter thick stratum, which was formed from volcanic ash, most likely from an eruption somewhere in the Mediterranean. Malta itself is not volcanic. The final stratum is the cultural layer where early Neolithic pottery, domestic animal bones and human remains were uncovered. This dates back to around 8,000 years ago, so 6,000 BCE. In 1924, Arthur Keith and George Sinclair authored a paper in the Journal of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland entitled Neanderthal Man in Malta. This was not the first published article on the subject, but it sought to cast further light on it. They discuss reports emerging from the excavations of the cave, including one by Giuseppe Despot, who, with Carmelo Rizzo, had uncovered some unusual teeth. One of their photographs was featured in the article and showed eight human teeth recovered from the cave. Six of these were similar to those found in modern humans, but two were unusual. These molars showed evidence of pterodontism, a term coined by Keith, which refers to a tooth where the roots are not separate structures, but form one block. Since this had been seen in Neanderthal teeth at the time, it was thought that these two molars proved a Paleolithic habitation of the Maltese islands, tens of thousands of years before the accepted date. But it was also noted by Keith that there were no other finds in the cave which indicated a Paleolithic culture had once lived there. In his article, Keith mentioned that pterodontism was known at the time as occasionally being present in modern humans, but this was seen as different, a sort of fused root with clearly discernible separate root channels. Another pterodont molar was also found in Ardalum in 1936. But pterodontism alone wasn't the only reason why the experts of the day suggested Neanderthals had lived in Malta. It was also because the molars were excavated from the deer layer which dates back to between 10,000 and 18,000 years. 
Since archaeological excavations were not as careful as they are today, many experts considered this stratigraphic evidence as anomalous and probably due to a mistake made during the digs. In the 1950s, Dr. Kenneth Oakley, who had famously proved Piltdown Man to be a hoax, carried out fluorine tests on the molars, which showed they were contemporary with the deer, meaning the stratigraphic layer was, in fact, accurate. However, his later nitrogen tests contradicted this and showed the molars to be Neolithic. In 1967, uranium oxide tests appeared to prove the more ancient date. So, all in all, there was a lot of confusion over what these results meant for the three prospective Neanderthal molars, but ultimately the suggestion that they belonged to the Neolithic became the general consensus amongst experts. Then, in 1962, a Maltese dentist called Dr. Manjun wrote a paper for the British Dental Journal detailing two molars he had extracted over the years, which had advanced torodontism. This added further weight to the argument that it is sometimes seen in modern humans. Two Maltese medical doctors joined the debate, and in their 1997 book Dossier Malta, Anton and Simon Mifsud put forward the argument that the nitrogen tests had been invalid. There also appears to have been a lot of misunderstandings regarding exactly which of the three Torodont molars had been subjected to which tests. In 2016, they consulted with experts in geometric morphometrics, where additional features of the teeth, such as the crowns, could be looked at in more detail to help with their identification. Using this method, one of the molars was seen as a match for a Neanderthal tooth. The Mifsuds argued for a DNA analysis to be done, on the teeth, but this didn't take place. One of the main arguments against their hypothesis is that there is no supporting evidence for a Paleolithic presence on Malta. The authors counter this by pointing out that some Paleolithic tools have been found in the past, but these have not been well documented and haven't survived. During the Paleolithic, Sicily did have human inhabitants. The sites of Grotta della Dora and the rock art on the island of Levanzo are evidence for this. But these Paleolithic inhabitants aren't thought to have made their way to Malta across the land bridge that joined them at the time. Sicily even had a Mesolithic site, the Grotta del Uso, and it's known that Mesolithic humans were capable of sea travel. So Malta's isolation towards the end of the Ice Age caused by rising sea levels would not have been a barrier to such migrations. However, when weighing the evidence, the consensus still stands that Malta's human habitation began in the early Neolithic period. As I said at the beginning of the video, there are many reasons why people think human habitation in Malta may have been earlier than conventionally thought. I wanted to use this video to focus on one of the main reasons, the story of the Torridon molars. However, let's also touch on another reason which has been discussed at length by Dr. Anton Mifsud as well. The archaeologist Professor Emanuel Anati is reported to have taken photographs inside Ardalum in 1986 of geometric patterns on the walls. As a specialist in the art and religion of prehistoric cultures, he was convinced that these belonged to the Paleolithic. In 1989, he also created illustrations of art he had discovered in Ar Hassan, a cave close to the Halfar industrial estate and about four kilometers from Ardala. This shows elephants and deer and was observed as being under a stalagmitic layer. There are no, tra there are no traces of the geometric etchings of Ardalum today and Ar Hassan is only partially accessible, so the area where the rock art was supposedly seen is blocked off. Many scholars think that the rock art in both locations was imagined and was nothing more than natural formations. However, if they did exist in the forms that have been reported, then experts on Paleolithic rock art attribute them to late Paleolithic hunter-gatherers. The story is certainly a fascinating one, and new discoveries could support either side of the argument. But at the moment, the earliest radiocarbon date on the island is 6000 BC. What do you think of it all? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm on Patreon, so if you'd like to support my work through it, the link is in the description below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more content.